And when you look at the increase in uh, the non-performing loans in the manufacturing sector, it was mainly linked to two uh, factories. Uh, and when we dig deep on the issues uh, or the reasons why these uh, two failed to service their loans, it's really an issue of uh, mismanagement and uh, uh, the business model. Uh, so we we don't want, as I said, it's not a, a sector issue, like saying industry sector has a challenge that will uh, causing this NPL. So we think, uh, and this, the bank, they're working with the promoter to try and sort out the issues. We also hope maybe this will come back as a good uh, project later, uh, so we don't think that will impact on negative on the entire uh, concept of Made in Rwanda. Now, uh, you have slashed the, 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 the Kirepo rate to 5%, uh, 5.5%, which is probably unprecedented. And uh, like you said, it's, uh, we have seen an increase in, uh, in, uh, private, uh, in credit to private sector. But you said you are going to maintain this rate. Uh, could you tell us why? No, I think we, as I said last year, uh, we had two situations that really enabled us to, to, to be accommodative. Uh, one, we had pressures on inflation had eased since the second half of last year. Uh, foreign exchange pressure also eased. Last year we had very low uh, depreciation. But uh, from 2016, again, as I said, the economic performance was very low. We could see domestic demand was low. So as, as the Monetary Policy Committee, we said we needed to give signal to, to the banking sector that we, we expect them to lend more, and therefore we reduced our key repo rates to allow more lending to the private sector. And as again, as we showed in the presentation, we are happy that we secret the private sector increasing last year by 13.9, uh, and we expect that to continue. When you look at it, the outlook for this year, we still expect to see inflation below 5%. We expect the depreciation of the far one day to, to be still low. Maximum, we project it to depreciate at 4.5%. So this allows us room to remain accommodative. As I said, to which level in terms of the rate, whether we maintain 5.5 or we do a change, that will be determined by the Monetary Policy Committee, depending on the prevailing conditions at the time when we meet. All right, you've mentioned that uh, the government is on the right track of achieving the cashless economy. Uh, now, uh, what makes you so hopeful that you are going to achieve this? There's one simple measure we are using. Uh, we've been promoting the use of electronic means of payment as, uh, as a country and uh, as a government, as a regulator, as an industry. There's a lot of investment by banks and uh, telecom companies in uh, modern means of payment, uh, digital payment channels. Uh, so far where we are, when you look at the, we try to measure the volume or the value of electronic transactions compared to GDP, I think we were at almost uh, 0.3 in uh, 2011, moved to about 20% uh, last 2016, and 2017 we are 27%, the ratio of electronic payments to GDP. So th the indication when you look at the, the, the curve of this growth is, is really exponential, and that gives us confidence that more Rwandans are are, are getting to use electronic means of payment. And the more, in fact, this is when we still have less products on the market with less education. So we, uh, as, as you remember last year, we did uh, a cashless campaign. Uh, we continue working with the financial institutions and, uh, and other government uh, agencies to, to maintain that education. But as more products come on board, as accessibility come, uh, is eased as costs for using these products are eased, then we expect to see more people uh, using non-cash means to, to transact. And so that gives us confidence that we'll see, let me call it cash light. Maybe cashless is, uh, is ideal, but at least we, we expect to reduce tremendously the amount of transaction used with cash. 
from what has been presented, uh, what interested you most is that you would want to share with the Rwandans uh, with regards to the national economy growth? No, I, I think as we say today, the, the interesting thing is that we, we saw good economic performance in 20, the second half of 2017. And this is in all aspects. The increase in credit from the, centr the, the, the banks, the non reduction in uh, inflation, the improvement in economic performance itself, because that quarter we saw 8% growth. Uh, so, and, and we see that continuing in 2018, at least in the first half of 2018, our projection is still very positive. And uh, this gives room for people to invest. And as you invest, you work with financial institutions. So we want really to, to, to encourage people to work with financial institutions, but also know their rights and obligations. When you borrow, you have to pay back the loan. So what some of the challenges we showed today that uh, banks had was uh, increase in non-performing loans that affects the, the profitability of the banks, and at the end of the day affects their appetite to lend. So we really want to encourage people to work with banks, but know their obligation to pay back loans, prepare good projects, follow up the management of the projects and be able to pay back the loans if we are to maintain a healthy financial sector that will continue supporting the economic development of this country. Uh, there has been an increment of car premiums and uh, this has drawn complaints and criticism uh, among the car users. So we would like to hear your thoughts on that. I think we issued a statement at the central bank uh, beginning of this year. Uh, giving our position, the, the increase in the rates, the premium rates of car insurance was supposed to start in 2014. This, this sector had challenges way back in 20, we could see that 2012, 2013. And at the central bank, we commissioned a study by an actuarial uh, firm to determine the, the price of the, or the cost of the, the risk the banks were insuring vis-a-vis -vis the motor, side, motor industry. And they came up with rates in 2014 that showed that what the industry was charging was well low and it couldn't sustain the business. But because there were new firms coming in and uh, so there was a lot of negative competition within the industry and they're not able to raise their rates based on this uh, uh, study. So, and because of that, they continued incurring heavy losses uh, in the private insurance sector mainly linked to the motor insurance, as, as the numbers show. Uh, so I think last year the, 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 the players in the industry agreed to stop the negative competition, the price undercutting, and they went on to, to increase, to implement the, what the study has shown. The study had expected the increase to be done in three phases, 60% uh, in 2014, 20% in 2015, 20% in 2016. So that wouldn't have caused any uh, big challenges. But because they are, it was overdue, they just lumped everything at once. And because the increase, when you look in terms of percentages and all that, looked big, so there was this outcry in the market, and uh, understandably so, uh, because a jump of 73% or more than 100% on some products that was going to cause uh, an outcry. But in actual fact, as the cost of the risk they they're insuring, it's even low because this was supposed to have been implemented by 2016. Uh, so we, we think going forward, we continue working with them to put order in their business and uh, remove all the other uh, uh, impediments and we hope the sector will be much more healthy.